All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to get your PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5 controller running on your Windows computer. This should work with 10 or 11 just fine uh, by letting it pretend that it's an Xbox controller. And this is going to be using the DS4 Windows program. So if we go to Google, we type in DS4 Windows. You'll have a couple of different options for finding this website. Uh, this one here at the top is unrelated to the actual person that creates DS4 Windows. Don't click on this one. You want the one down here that says releases Ryochan 7. Ryochan is the person who actually works on and develops this software. So make sure you click on that. And I will also put a link in the video description below. And then you want to have both the .NET framework, which is linked right here which is a framework that Microsoft creates that allows apps to run on it and it lets them make programs a little easier. And then you're also going to want the 64-bit edition of DS4 Windows. So let's go ahead and start by downloading the .NET framework. I'll put that in my handy dandy DS4 Windows folder that I created just to keep things simple. And then I will also download the latest 64-bit edition of DS4 Windows. It comes in a zip folder. If you don't know what a zip folder is, think about stuffing a bunch of stuff into a briefcase so that it, you know, is as tight as possible. You fit as much stuff in there as possible for the lowest amount of space. You can just grab a 7-zip for free if you don't have something to open that with. So I'll just save that to the same folder as I put in. So we'll go ahead and show that in its associated folder real quick. And we're going to start by installing the Windows desktop runtime of the .NET framework. So I'm just going to double click on that to install it. And then this should go relatively quickly. This is just a small framework that is what a lot of different apps, especially open source ones, are built upon. And then once that's installed, I will just extract this DS4 Windows folder to a folder of the same name. And then inside of here should be something called DS4 Windows. It's like a rainbowy kind of like blue to purple logo. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. That is the actual software itself. And it's going to ask me where I want to save my settings. Um, you have two options. You can save it in the same folder that you run the program from. That's usually my preference. Or you can save it to your app data folder, which is the folder where a lot of different software on your computer saves its settings automatically. I'm just gonna keep it in the program folder because A, um, that, that solves a few problems in the long run, and B, if I have to redo this, because I do a lot of tutorials for this, it makes it easier to set things back up later if something breaks. So when you open up DS4 Windows, you should get this window here, and it also should open up the welcome to DS4 Windows screen that's gonna help us install the secondary drivers that help make this program work. Now, if you don't see that step-by-step -step installation guide for whatever reason, you can just go into the settings panel over here. There's like little tabs at the top of the, the little window for DS4 Windows. And then over here in the utilities is all of the different windows that can pop up to help you get things set up. So I think that that wasn't the control panel. That is the controller driver setup window. So if this doesn't show up, click on controller slash driver setup in the settings tab. And from here, it's going to want us to install a software called Vision Bus Driver. That's basically an interface that helps your computer talk to a controller that isn't an Xbox controller. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on install that. It should automatically connect and download it for me. And then I can just agree to install that in the default location. You can put that wherever you want. And that should install relatively quickly. If for whatever reason, because occasionally connection problems are happening for folks when they try to download that, just wait for a little while and then try to download the Vision Bus driver again later. So when that's done, for the most part, you don't need to do anything else for installing stuff. Um, if you were using an older version of Windows, it would prompt you to install the Xbox 360 driver 
because this primarily functions off of pretending like your PS4 controller is an Xbox controller, but we don't need to do that because it's built into 10 and 11. So that should be it. You also got some optional drivers you can play around with, but we don't really need those. So now I've got my controller in my hand. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in with this frayed cord. I don't recommend using a frayed cord for it. And then I'm gonna click on start. And if everything is working correctly, you should see your controller pop up right here on the list. And if I unplug it, it'll disappear. You can also hook your controller up with Bluetooth and it'll do the same thing. So when I plug it in, it should show back up right here. And now I am good to go. The default profile is going to let my controller pretend it's a default Xbox controller, Xbox One, Xbox 360 controller. And I can immediately go start playing games as if I have a controller plugged into my computer on Steam, Epic, wherever, this should do the trick. Now, you can also go in here and hit edit, and this will allow you to customize your settings by clicking on the button, and you can rebind it to pretty much anything that's connected to your computer, mouse, keyboard, or the Xbox 360 controller by simply clicking on the appropriate button on this little pop-up menu of the controller, and then it'll ask you what you want it to rebind it to. And as you can see, it gives me all of these different options. You can hover over and see what you're clicking on. And then you can just click that and it'll rebind it to whatever direction pad or arrow button you want to connect it to. You can also create a brand new unbound profile that allows you to start from a scratch profile and set it up yourself manually or tweak it from one of their default profiles that creates a nice starting point. I'm not really gonna get into that today because this is just like the bare bones basics of how to get all this stuff set up. But for the most part, once you get everything plugged in and installed, this should pop up for you. Now, there is a consistent issue where people have been having this so that their controller isn't showing up on this window when they plug it in. My recommendation is first start by doing a hard reset. If you look on the back of your controller, on the right side next to one of the screw holes is a funny little shaped hole. There's a button in there to reset your controller. Press a paper clip in there for like a count of 12. That ends up fixing a lot of problems where the controller is trying to connect to like your PS4 or some setting is borked up from the factory. That'll reset it to default and you can plug it in and it should show up here. Um, if that doesn't work, you could try running DS4 Windows as admin or making sure that you have the latest version of the .NET framework installed and also running the latest version of DS4 Windows. And it also has an automatic updater that you can use to make sure that it is properly and completely up to date. So that's the basics of how to get DS4 Windows to get open and running. This is just a driver that allows you to use your controller as if it is an Xbox 360 controller. You can get it to show PlayStation buttons. I do know how to do that. I will do that for a different tutorial. So until then, I hope this helps you to get started. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.